Hey, welcome to another edition of Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. I'm Paul. My wife, Melissa, is sitting in the recliner. Um, it's the week of Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm fortunate. I've been lucky to have this week off. It's not off, and I take time off. You could ask Melissa. I'm kind of like a workaholic all the time. So um, I took the entire week off, and... Uh, Kids, Samuel's out of school this week, and Will won't be going back to RCC probably till about the first of the month in December, maybe uh, during that week. So we're doing fine. Um, we're spending Thanksgiving this year at home. Um, for the past, we used to go to our um, her brother's house. Pretty huge spread until it got so big and huge, and then um, then we used to do a family thing out into a restaurant or something. We would pick a restaurant out that the boys would enjoy. Uh, but with COVID nineteen and all that, we're going to do things uh, at home. So uh, I personally like a fried turkey. Um, my brother in law makes it a beautiful golden fried turkey um he used to cook that in a regular turkey in the oven which i think that melissa likes the regular turkey and dressing um and then i think my brother-in-law usually had uh, uh well i don't know duck or he had um another game type animal he's a hunter um you know, I think he made beef jerky out of one, uh, out of deer meat or something, and we had part of that, so. Uh, but this year we're going to head home. We decided we're going to have a uh, roast. Um, believe it or not, the grocery stores are ridiculous. Uh, uh, end of the world, people are thinking. Um, can't find... Very uh, slim pickings on toilet paper. I went to Costco the other day and they didn't have any. Um, I mean, people were taking paper towels. Uh, they had no disinfectant. They had no uh, that bacteria soap or stuff like that. They didn't have any of that. I mean, they got wiped out. Went to Kroger and Kroger was pretty much wiped out. I was managed to get a some rolls there uh, of one particular brand. It's not the brand we normally buy, but we managed to get that. Uh, went to Walmart for our shopping, and they were wiped out. I mean, they were down to these little toilet paper rolls, that, you know, the generic for a couple of bucks, four rolls, and, and you're only allowed one pack. So it's like, eh, no. So... Ohio is in serious trouble. I don't know how it is in other states. The uh, We got 88 counties. Um, they're going through this color coding system. Um, they had uh, one county for the first time during this pandemic. They went to purple, which is the highest level. Uh, we live in Warren County um, in the... Uh, Lebanon, Ohio, the city of Lebanon's in Warren County. Uh, it's all red. Uh, they went from the, the color coding system that the governor is using. It's uh, yellow for low, and it works its way up. Orange, red, and purple. Well, we've got one county that it's in purple. Our county is all red. Majority of them are all red, except for maybe about 10 counties that it's orange. So, um, the numbers that the governor keeps speaking out, um, is not very encouraging. Um, we're down a curfew in the state of Ohio where you have to be from 10 to 5. They don't want you on, out on the streets. Um, but it's okay if, if, if you had to go to essentials, like it's okay to go to the grocery store. If you had to go, you're picking up food. They're allowing that, but pretty much curfew. They want everybody off the street. 
uh, I'm not sure what Indiana's doing, but I know the state of Kentucky, they will pretty much shut down all indoor dining. And I think the, there's so much backlash in the state of Ohio for, to do that here again for a second time. But if things don't improve, I'm not, will not be surprised if the governor, um, shuts down all the restaurants again. Which is going to really cripple a lot of these smaller restaurants even further. Because they were, because of the warm weather, they could have outdoor dining and all that. They were trying to recoup from all their missing financing. But now if they do another shutdown, there's always talk in the news regarding that. Um, that may, we, we may see some long time, a lot of restaurants just. Completely wipe out. Um, I want to follow up on a few things. Um, our last podcast, we did uh, Cynthia Beaumont. And there's she's been putting out some interesting videos this past week that are highly questionable. Um, I want to start off with the... Uh, her. Thanksgiving video. Uh, I thought it was interesting. It's a real basic because I love to cook. You know, I cook just as much. Probably I cook for a male in the household. I cook a lot. Uh, my wife does some cooking as well, but uh, I enjoy it. It's relaxing. Um, we try a few things. We're trying to teach the kids. Uh, my both my parents growing up had to work, so I had to learn how to cook at an early age cooking meals so um, I think it's a good thing for kids growing up that they learn how to do some basic cooking and stuff um, her video was interesting for Thanksgiving it was real basic I thought her temperature on her bird was too high uh, because when she took it out it was real brown on the top and you know that the bottom of it was going to be raw and she had to put some stuff on it she, at least she put some foil on it and stuff um, I think her, her showing how to cook a turkey was just as a basic fine video. It, it, it's almost like a startup train. Hey, you never cook a turkey. You could watch it and you can get to learn a few things. But I was overly concerned about the safety aspect of it. You know, always wear the mask when cooking. You know, you got people over here. The only one in, within reason that makes sense. And other it, it, I think it was an overkill because, you know, she'll say one thing and then totally go to the opposite. I mean, she did safety first with this video, all their mask on and all this other stuff when cooking. But then, I don't know how the state, I don't know what the laws are in New Jersey regarding mandatory masks and stuff. For an Ohio, is, if you're out in public, even in a park, you're supposed to wear a mask. Doesn't matter if there's anybody near you. They, they want you to wear the mask. And I think there's some states are made it mandatory. And some haven't pulled that trigger yet. Um, but I thought it was interesting. You know, she preached a lot about mask safety in her turkey. But then she goes to, into a park uh, to do some videos. And she decided, I'm not going to wear the mask. You know, and I guess some people look at it, well, you're by yourself, you know, what's the difference? And that, but there, you're in a park, you're in a public park, there's still people around, even though they're more than six feet away from you. But then she had a conversation with a five-year-old kid, and she still has no mask on. And it's like, I don't know, I it struck a nerve a little bit with that. Um, I... Uh, even when I take the dogs out to the uh, dog park, you know, I'm still wearing a mask. Uh, like I said, the governor, you, you know, they want you to get used to, in the habit of that, you know. Place good habits over bad habits. You know, the more often you do it, eventually it becomes a normal routine. You don't even think about it. So, uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, while she was in the park... Um, we created a few videos this week. 
which is nice to get out, you know, uh, uh, even for us, you know, just getting out of the house for about an hour to do some grocery shopping or something is better because we're tired of being cooped up. In the winter months, as it gets colder, the snow comes flying through, you know, it tends to get a little worse, you know, you get a little cabin fever going on. But expectations, okay? I know she's got some squirrel friends in the park. She loves to feed them. And there's nothing wrong with feeding the squirrels and stuff. But you got to understand the expectations when feeding animals in the park, okay? Uh, there's certain townships here in Ohio. There's a lot of geese, goose, geese, goose, geese, geese um, around and... Um, the city of Blue Ash. I mean, it's it has a good an abundance of the of the geese, uh, and some around in Mason and stuff. Um, there are signs posted. They don't want you to feed them, and there are specific reasons why they don't want to feed them. You know, it varies across. Um, but you know, I understand squirrels. You want to feed them and stuff in the park. You got to understand the expectations. If you're going to feed them, they're going to come close to you. If they get comfortable with you, they're not afraid of you. They're going to come to you and they may touch you. The one video she had, I think she was paranoid because she thought a squirrel was hitting her, climbing her back or something. And I'm thinking if she was, you know, oh, I thought, don't know. And she was getting real tight, tense. If a squirrel was climbing her back and she really felt a squirrel climbing up her back, she didn't like it, she'd be getting up and moving. Um, I would be sitting there like in fear that, oh my, what's happening? And a couple of times they're crossing her feet and all that. You know, that's part of the expectations. If you're going to feed the squirrels and the animals, you know, they're not afraid of you. You got to learn not to be afraid of them. I mean, they're going to come up to you. Uh, they're not like some animals like dogs and uh, cats. They're going to sit there back, down, you know, stay, you know. They ain't going to understand that. At least not in, in a short term where whether or not you're going to get the same set of squirrels and they're going to eventually understand that. I, I doubt it, but um, I thought that was interesting. Um, the <sighs> I noticed she's got her Amazon um, wish list on her pa uh, page. And I took a glance at it. I mean, I see scarves, lots of cat food, uh, bird seeds, uh, LED lights, super glue, uh, tons of cat treats, uh, cat stuff, uh, uh, a bed for a dog. It could be used for a cat, too. But it was interesting with the PlayStation 5 that's sitting on there. If you're a true great gamer, you're going to understand when a new console comes out, you have to get with pre-sales. You have to buy it, pay ahead of time, because if you're waiting until they hit the stores to buy it, ain't going to happen. Um, we kind of learned that with uh, early on this year with the pandemic closing in and Looking for things to do, um, we decided to buy uh, a Nintendo Switch for a second. a second one. My son's got one upstairs in his room, and we wanted one for down here in the living room that we can use to, to play on. And we learned quickly because of the pandemic, just like the toilet paper, paper towels, disinfectant, and etc., it was hard to come by. You know, people are finding ways to stay entertained. We also learned that board games and stuff were being scarce because uh, all, uh, everybody was doing the same thing. They're buying games to play with kids and stuff. And that was kind of rebuilding around. But with, anytime with expectations for a new console. Xbox came out with one. PlayStation has come back out with one. I wouldn't surprise there will be a new version next year from Nintendo coming out with one. Um, but you got to get in, you have to put money down and get one of these pre-sales. 
so they can reserve one for you. If not, you're going to be out of luck. Uh, for what I understand, a PlayStation 5 is roughly about 500 bucks, but people, some people bought them and then they're reselling them on eBay knowing people are desperate. They're selling it for 1000 to almost $2,000 for a box, depending how desperate you are. But I noticed on her wish list, I thought this was interesting, and it's in quotes that she listed. This list is accurate as of November 23rd, 2020. Nothing has been purchased. A PlayStation 5 was not purchased. They know I want it, so they don't want anyone to buy it for me. As soon as I relist it, it, it they pretend to buy it. That's a quote. So you go down to her list. I don't know, it's about a quarter of the way down. Uh, you see, PlayStation 5 console. Um, needs one. And this is last purchase, November 2013. Well, uh, yeah, I wish her the best of luck. I mean, I'm working a full 40, uh, 40 plus hours a week. And with between utilities, cables cable bill, um, grocery bills, and the holidays coming up. You know, I want a PlayStation 5. I could have gone to one of these pre-sales ahead of time before they were shipped out. And I couldn't afford it. I mean, I, you know, it's Christmas, like I said, with Christmas and all that comes up. I, you know, I felt money had to be spent elsewhere, excuse me. My diet Mountain Dew, no sugar. Very good stuff. So, um, so we'll kind of wait and see. I mean, in a, early next year, you'll find them at GameStop. Somebody will have some, start selling used boxes. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Eh. But uh, as much as I would like to go back to using the PlayStation and that, I just. You know, priorities. So, we would live with it. I've learned, I'm not a huge Nintendo fan. But, you know, I've got a few games that I do enjoy that I play. Uh, there's a, believe it or not, there's a farming game. Um, but I, I enjoy, uh, what's the name of that game? Um, I don't know. It's not a Harvest Moon in that. It's not that. But, uh, but, uh, and then I got a golf game and a few other various types of games that I like. I'm more of the the multiple game packages, you know, the darts, the, the card games and stuff like that. So, um, okay. Yeah, it, it was kind of hard to. Someone put this list together that I was wanting to discuss because I'm not trying to come across that I'm nitpicking about anything. It's just that there's certain things that, you know, I, I picked up. I thought, this is not real. One of the things, um, I was very upset. She had a video that said, let's put on our war paint. And when I think of war paint, I think of the American Indians type war paint and I thought originally I thought okay she's about to attack somebody go after them with furry you know put on the war paint and go nah she's just trying to plug in Avon products um I just don't know you know I watched a, another couple's video earlier in the week and I have to agree with them um, uh, she's not going to make much money on Avon she's got to put in the effort um, Melissa what channel it was? no uh, not I yet like them. I'd like them too but I um, yeah well we'll leave it like that I think they know who, who we're talking about um we watched them last night as well. It was, I, I like listening to them. 
Um, the she can't. Melissa used to sell Avon, and if you're gonna try to sell it online, and then buy the stuff, and then try to plug the stuff, you're gonna get X number of sales, but you're not really not gonna make some serious money. I mean, she's got to get plug into her, you know, fan base, um, her customers. Uh, she's going to have to, you know, okay, here's a book. He's got my contact info. If you're interested, start passing them out. Get the public around her to start doing some of that stuff. And then she could try to get them, okay, we can deliver, have this delivered. Order these and have them delivered directly to you. Or here's my code. But off her channel alone and say, here's my Avon, here's all that. I just, I don't see that happening. Especially when I think she most of her subscribers were bought. So, but it based on the number of people are watching her videos as I'm looking at the views, uh, yeah, there's, there's, it varies. I mean, a few hundred, you know, I see, okay, 1.2K views. Okay. But there's a difference whether or not, because of her attitude, because of how her, her her emotions is like a yo-yo. I I don't think people feel comfortable and well enough to be trusting her with uh, buying stuff through her and then turn around. And she'll get us some her her normal friends that may be doing that, but on a customer base, looking at an, an old sales manager when I worked for Sears Roebuck, that's not going to fly. Your customer base got to feel comfortable with you. They got to know that. You're not acting like a nut, whether it's in the store, out of the store, whatever. I mean, all that matters. So that's just my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. Uh, Melissa and I saw another video last night that were uh, one of them that she does because she did admit she cranks these videos out like crazy. She may record. Uh, Five, six, seven, ten, who knows, twelve in a given day, and then set them out, you know, as certain certain days she knows when she's gonna release X number of these videos. That's fine. If she could be able to do that. Um gotta you know, gotta give her credit to give her energy to do that. I mean, I'm trying to set up these schedules, um, my videos for my podcasts and stuff. Um in between what I've got going on with the family and the animals and work, you know, um, it's not easy at times. Um, do I want to produce more videos and more often? Yes, but I've got to do them. I just don't want to create a video and say blah, 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 blah. And then there's no source. There's no purpose to it. Uh, I tend her videos after a while. It seems to be the same type of videos every day blah 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 and it's like what do you want to call that uh girl chit chat you know you know sitting at a coffee table and chit chatting all the time you know um again i think she needs to get more of a point but in going back to her recent videos i thought it was interesting i wrote down these um couple of notes down here um, I understand and, and respect, this is her first set of holidays without Tommy. Uh, I understand there's some emotional that can go through there. Um, this would be the first Thanksgiving, the first Christmas, um, and, um, there's a song out that it comes to my mind. Uh, there's a Christian singer called Mark Schwartz. Um, his one of his biggest hits is "He's My Son." Um, it's a conversation with God regarding uh, a boy who had leukemia, and um, you know, praying that it more should happen to him versus his kid. You know. 
And by the way, I did hear on another video that the the, the little boy he wrote this so, recorded the song for is doing remission free, and he's doing well, and uh, we're thankful for that. But um, there, he's got another song called the. Um, Oh, now I'm going blank here. Uh, oh, it's called Different Kind of Christmas is what it is. Uh, different Kind of Christmas, and it's about losing a loved one during the holidays and how to deal with it. It's a beautiful song. I recommend checking it out. But in her videos, it's because of her... String of videos that she's done the last couple of months. It's been like an emotional roller coaster. You know, you get, you never know what you're going to get out of her. And then it goes up and down, up and down, even in the same video. And the one thing I've noticed consistently out of these videos, when she gets real emotional, you could tell she's working herself up. And then it's like, where's the tears? She doesn't cry. Now, granted, there are some people have problems with their tear ducts and they don't, they just can't cry. But outside of that, yeah. I'm sorry. Speak your piece, girl. I'm sorry. Um but for her it's almost you can tell she's trying to get herself <laughs> but there's no tears. I understand it's emotional time. But I, after it, she does it so often in her videos, it's like, okay, this is starting to be an act. It, it's just my opinion. I think I think you know, she's. Uh, I I don't know. Something's going through her head right now. I whether it's try to I, I use this tactic to get more viewerships or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I look at it, I start laughing when she starts getting in these emotional bursts. Because, and then she'll, and you'll notice a lot of times in her videos, and it's not just this one, but there's been previous ones, she does this, and then she turns around, looks at the camera, and smiles, and say, oh, by the way, I, I you know, I, I am out of peanut butter, or I'm out of this, you know, you know, you know, you know I'm hungry, you know, I'm on my last piece of bread, or something, I, you know. And, or I gotta crank out the videos, you know, to pay my rent. It's just, it's not real enough for me when she goes through these big emotional fake cries, and then the next second, it's yeah, the very next, second. it switches. It's like she changed masks. The head rotates, and you get a different side of Cynthia. Uh -huh. You know, it's like happens too often that now when she does it. It leaves a lot of reasonable doubt of who she is and what she's doing and all that other good. I'll tell you what comes to my mind. Bipolar. I don't know whether she's bipolar or not. I really don't know. I do know that based on my experience suffering from depression and anxiety, that a lot of her tendencies look familiar. Of people who suffer from depression and anxiety. Whether she's getting treatment for that, I don't know. I know she talked in her video about what you know, losing medical coverage and all that. I don't know what her her situation is now with Tommy being gone. Whether she gets medical coverage or not, or she's on Cobra or you know other other services. But you know. I think personally, based on those traits that I've seen enough from her, you know, she could use some help. You know, it'll help her get through the holidays. It'll also help her become a better person. But then again, she's the queen, you know. You know, she's not going to believe anything that, especially this old man has to say. So, uh, you know, her fake crying, yeah, I don't buy it anymore. You know, and I people could be yelling at me that I'm insensitive, that I'm a complete asshole or something. I don't care. These are trends. The data, look back at the trends. They don't lie. 
you know, when she is trying to be sensitive and she is sincere, you can't tell because she does it so often. And then the very second she's changing her an, an angle of her video. And, you know, so I see that a lot. Um, the other bullet point that I had here, um, the holidays themselves. Um, yeah, I used to, you know, a lot of people love the holidays. Uh, this time of year from Thanksgiving, you know, well, Halloween's more. It's my last favorite holiday. And then anything after that, you know, for the rest of the year is down for me. For several reasons. Um, you got, um, as soon as Halloween, not, sometimes not even before Halloween ends, you got Christmas stuff being flying up. And you still got another holiday to deal with. And it's like, what the hell? Why is they do. They're all. Everybody's out for the buck. There's no more holiday cheer. It's all what they can do for me lately type stuff. Uh, our radio station here in town, uh, local station, um, plays a lot of '80s, '90s, and today music. Um, Ninety-nine percent of the stuff that they're playing on the radio is all Christmas stuff, and before they never done that until Thanksgiving. And they've been playing it for the last few days, so it's like they're they're getting a head start playing Christmas music. And it's like, for the longest time, it was like, boy, why? You want to be a humbug before the holidays because it's like you're pushing for Christmas already. You're pushing, give me those black, I want you in the stores for those Black Fridays. And it's like, we all forget the meaning of Christmas. In several levels. And, I, you know, it's not just the Christianity of, of remembering Christmas, okay? Because everybody celebrates that part of their lives in their own way. Not going to judge that. Not going to go on that. It's the other side, you know, I've learned with my wife's help and my two boys, you know. We do go out of our way to make Christmas nice for them, even though it's not my favorite time of the year. I don't disappoint them for Christmas whatsoever. Um, my birthday falls three days after Christmas, and it was always a horrible thing because a lot of times, well, here's your Christmas and your birthday. And then when your birthday comes, there's nothing mentioned. It's like an afterthought. It's like uh, not since he's been married. I, I'm talking about I'm talking about growing up. There you go. Okay. Growing up, and it that was another reason why you know the holidays has always been depressing for me. And um, Samuel's born uh, on the seventeenth of December, and melissa and i have gone out of our way to make sure that we celebrate his birthday outside of christmas we don't mix the two together um because i don't want him to go down the same road i did uh growing up with you know oh my birthday is not meaningful so and it's kind of funny, Will's, as soon as Samuel's birthday is done, Will's already preaching and pushing for his birthdays in March. In fact, his Saint birthday Patrick. on St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. So it's like, he's already plugging away. Will's like, I know there's Christmas coming, but don't forget about my birthday. You know, it's like, yes, Will. Um, so... Everybody's got their own, some like every holidays, some like just this is their favorite time. I know uh, my dad liked Thanksgiving for, for a favorite holiday. But then and also then, then the day after, you know, he's out hunting. Yeah, that's part of his, you know, hunting season. He went after rabbits and pheasants. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, goes after deer. And turkeys. And turkeys. And uh, 
Yeah, pheasants. And then uh, he was just down in Florida, went hunting, and uh, got wild boar and an alligator. It's going to have the alligator stuff. It's like, oh, a nice, huge ten one. Foot alligator. Yeah, 10 feet. Yeah. Wow. That's large. I hate to think what the mouth radius on that thing is. So, um, I gave up hunting years ago. Too many bad experiences. Um, I enjoyed what I was out and what I was doing, but uh, I I gave it up for personal reasons. Um, so, but Cynthia mentioned, going back to her, kind of round this back that way. Uh, you got Black, you got Thanksgiving on Thursday, Black Friday, this Friday. Uh, a lot of the stores this year are, due to COVID, are going to be closed on Thanksgiving. And they're going to open up super early. And I'm kind of curious how they're going to do that because with the restrictions. State of Ohio, they, they don't want you out at 5 a.m. until after 5. So, you know, start, start opening up. Maybe they're going to open up at 6. But if they open up at 5 or 2 in the morning, you know, I, that could be a violation. I don't know. I'm not sure how that goes. Uh, and then Cyber Monday, all the sales you can get online. And some of them have already started between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's already started in some certain deals that you can get at certain uh Companies are starting early to help try to build up that those early sales. So, but Cynthia mentioned that her favorite holidays is Black Friday. And I don't consider Black Friday a holiday. It's a shopping made an event. Um, nothing wrong liking it. Not saying it's wrong or anything. I just don't consider it a holiday. Is what she mentioned. Um, it's just like it's to me with all these sales ads and how they're pushing is no worse than the political ads. You know, shop here. We're better. Don't go there. You know. So, hang on. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. So, I I don't know how this COVID thing going. I mean, with a pandemic going on, the numbers don't look good. I'll be shocked to hear record sales. People coming through the stores. Um, I see a lot of online shopping. Quite a bit. But... Uh, we're, you know, pretty much done. I mean, we still got some family members to pick up some stuff, but our boys are practically done. Um, we didn't buy their stuff online. Uh, the items that we're looking for, we uh, got, we went into a store to purchase. Um, I guess we could have found it online but some of the deals that we found in some of our local shops um, we couldn't pass up so uh, what else what else what else so it's nice to see that she's putting a lot more cat, animal cat videos I noticed she's got another separate page for bird watching it's a nice thing to do for bird watching uh, myself, I wouldn't be feeding squirrels. Uh, I'm afraid what they might get is they get closer. Um, and besides, you know, I would always have Finn with me and I would typically will not have squirrels and other animals near me with Finn. Uh, in fact, Finn goes outside and there's, uh, we got this, um, pine, we got pine trees in our, in our yards and, uh, Finn's chasing squirrels up the pine tree. So, um, 
this is uh, uh, your system. We got these before we got the, uh, the switch. Uh, I eventually switched over from this to the switch because I need the bigger screen. You know, I'm getting old. You know, so I, I need to be able to see. And this is nice and portable, but uh, uh, she hasn't charged it much. Well, I haven't used it since, uh, yeah. I had a nice little problem with my Switch. Had to be sent to the Nintendo store. And um, it kept the, the stick, the finger stick, how you move. Uh, it kept uh, moving on its own. And they couldn't fix it. So they sent me a totally different switch system, which, oh, that's nice, but here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. All of the games that I had played on my switch, since they gave me a different system, my games are gone. Wiped out. Had to start completely over. And that just like was so, had me so upset and depressed because I spent over 400 hours playing um, uh, Animal Crossing. And then I had over 200 and some hours on another farming game, Stardew, da Stardew Valley. So I have to start everything completely over again. So, yeah. That's why my system's dead, because when they returned it, we had to uh, reinstate, because re, uh, I also had a bunch of games that I bought that I, you know, once you buy it, you have to upload them. Those all, everything had to be put back on. So that took a long time. Yeah, a little security-wise for Nintendo. They feel like it's transferring your data from a system that's old or broken from, and you get a replacement. They don't feel that they feel it's a security violation to transfer the data from one system to another. So, and I've had lengthy conversations. I'm an IT engineer, and uh, yeah. Ain't gonna happen. So, um, Christmas card exchange. I thought it was interesting that she brought up this week. Um, you know, she's got more restrictions regarding sending out Christmas cards than anybody I've ever heard of. And I guess is that so they can limit. The number of people that you're sending cards to. Um, I don't know. I got one in friend that I grew up with in school and church. Uh, wanted to exchange Christmas cards. So I'll send one out there. But I don't, you know. Sending out Christmas cards and stuff. Um, I remember growing up. We used to have an archway. And we had all Christmas cards on both sides of the archway. Um, doing that. But... Uh, not so much now. We haven't been... There hasn't been many people sending out Christmas cards. At least, we don't receive much. Um, a lot of the families and stuff, you know, it's all electronically. You could send a, a electronic Christmas card through Facebook or whatever. Nowadays, it's a lot more elaborate sometimes. Uh, not so much personal versus filling out, taking the time to fill out a card and sending it, but... I thought that was interesting. Um, the last thing I had on my list is that she had a fan. And I think her real name is Deborah. But she calls her Deborah. Deborah. She's always called her Deborah, and I've always yelled at the TV. It's Deborah, most likely, not Deborah. Uh. I don't know what the beef is between the two of them. I really don't care. Um, I thought it was interesting, though. 
she was if it, it felt like her video was she was given interrogation through a video screen mm -hmm. to, for, to this poor woman uh, she took the time out whatever the beef was and say okay I'm sorry uh, the first card she sent out apparently she shredded it didn't even read it or did read it didn't care I don't know doesn't matter now um, and Deborah um, sends out another letter but then a package and then it's like okay i'll keep the package but i'm still gonna block you it's like what happened being a christian uh forgiving people these days um yeah some people might say something you know and other people don't like it you know okay i'm gonna ignore you i may block you but was it really that threatening Enough to, someone's giving you an olive branch to say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm willing to say, you know, I'm sorry. Um, let's make up, whatever. And you say no, I'm and still going to block her, but I'll take your gift. That's cold hearted. Here's the thing. Cynthia's take. If you even ask a question that she doesn't like, she'll block you. Um, if you don't agree 100% with her, she'll block you. You know, anything. She doesn't like the comment you write down. She'll block you. Whatever happened to um, everyone's entitled to their opinion about something. Now, I'm not saying, um, you know, cussing someone out. Yeah, if someone left me a comment that they're cussing me out uh, real snotty like that, then, yeah, I could see blocking them. But if they say, um, you know, okay, you feel this way, but I happen, this is just my opinion. I'm not yelling at you. This is just my opinion on the matter. You know, she'll block you. So if you don't agree with her 100%, she'll block you. It's either, and she said it before, you're either 100% with Cynthia or you're against her. If you don't agree with her, you're against her, you're blocked. You know, as I said for when I, uh, Melissa and I created this page, um, I made a point to saying, look, good or bad opinions, okay, they're going to be there. Because everybody's opinion, they're entitled to their opinion. I welcome their opinion. Sometimes you can learn off someone else's opinion that might disagree with you. The last video I created, uh, a lot of people watched it. A lot of people commented on it. Uh, I got some thumbs up. And I got, a, what, five or six thumbs down out of almost, what, 725 views or something like that? I don't know. What video? Uh, the last Cynthia Beaumont video. There was some thumbs down. On your views? Yeah. There were 700 and some views. 700. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think there might have been six. Six thumbs down. You know, it's like, okay, they didn't like the content. In fact, I when I saw the first thumbs down, um, I went on there, uh, something to the effect of, oh, one thumbs down. Could that possibly be Cynthia? You know, as a joke, ha-ha type thing. Um, I don't care. You know, Cynthia did make, there was a few comments in her last, I don't know, last week, 10 days, that I think, Someone, I, Cynthia's made a point. She says she doesn't watch other people's videos. She doesn't care. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But it doesn't mean that someone of her friends might watch the video of ripping her friend apart or making comments about our friend. And then checking Cynthia. And getting, getting back with her. This channel's talking about you, Cynthia, you know. And but, you know. Who cares? I was, you know. I want to get a podcast going 
of com basic conversations regarding various topics and stuff. Uh, it will help my therapy as well for my depression and that. Um, also, it gets me to be doing something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I was in journalism in high school and that. It's on the school paper. Um, and, yeah, I'm always late to the game on things. There's people who's been doing the exact same thing I'm doing. Um, they're people have been doing it since YouTube, the creation of YouTube. I mean, they got a head start. I'm always late to the game on things. But I'm okay with that, you know. So, I, I don't care whether she sees it or not. I expect negative stuff. You know, one of these days she may call me out on it, rip me apart. I'm okay. I got strong shoulders. You know, it's all conversation. You know, uh, again, I look at certain things that, you know, that goes on with her, her, like her videos or I see other videos. I try not to nitpick about certain things. Just the, the broader strokes of things that's constantly being done over and over. You know... Um, and things that I observe. Um, I do have some other topics that I'm going to be bringing up on my podcast. Um, there's one I want to get into uh, of customer service across the board. Whether it's online, going to restaurant, drive throughs um, I always... I love the idea like Joe Pesci did and Lethal Weapon. Um, I think it was Lethal Weapon 2 with Joe Pesci. You know, you don't want to go to the drive thru because they will fuck you at the end. You didn't say the real word, did you? So. <laughs> so. The customer service, you know, when we Google through that, you know, uh, regarding that. Um. I wasn't referencing Cynthia, if that's what you were thinking. I was referencing, you know. I know, but I didn't want you to say the F word. Oh, well, I'm sorry. A freaking fudge. So, uh, that's all I had. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to get, I'm putting that, typing that up now regarding the next uh, podcast regarding customer service, the pre and post COVID nineteen because it did change it a lot. So it, it's understandable on certain things on that at level. So look out for that video. Um, anything else you want to add? Mm -mm. Huh? We've got a we've got a little bit of Walmart haul video coming. Oh, yeah, I got a Walmart haul put together. So. All right. Well, I think my time is up. i um, been chit-chatting for a long time. So, uh, Melissa and I wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, I may pop on on Thanksgiving uh, to say hello and how things going. Uh, and show you what our Thanksgiving dinner looks like this year. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, be safe, be reasonable, and have a kind heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you be very thankful. much. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast. Thank you. Bye. If you have enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content. And check out the other great clips on Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul on the YouTube network. Thank you.